Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. New property going live on the website this weekend, guys. This one is the type of property that when it comes across our desk, we get very excited about the opportunity of being able to buy this, particularly at the price they were able to buy it at and the price they were able to offer you at. It is a large property, almost 20 acres, in a kind of rural residential farm community. It's a nice, big, sprawling lot. And as you can see from the headline, it's it's got a lot of nice features. Number one, it's a corner lot. Number two, it's essentially power with a lot line. I'm calling it power adjacent. But basically every property around it has power, has underground utilities. We say that it's partially fenced, but honestly, it's mostly fenced. And uh, in addition, it's one of these rare properties where the zoning and the covenants kind of work to your benefit. So for any of you out there who are looking for property that you can, you know, build a, a, a small home on or a nice kind of family farm or just sort of park a mobile or a modular home, uh, this may be the property for you, particularly if you want to be in relatively close proximity to Albuquerque. So with that said, guys, let's get to the details. This is reference number TRNM-7985, located in Torrance County. More specifically, it is in the town of McIntosh. Uh, even more specific than that, guys, is in the Antelope Springs subdivision. And I just want to draw your attention to this. It's lots 109, 110, 111, 112. This property is the uh, product of some sort of replat that occurred sometime in the last, I don't know when, let's say 40 years. Uh, so I don't want you to think that it's four adjacent smaller lots. It's not. It is just one big 18.97, roughly 20-acre property. And as you saw up top, of course, this is priced at $15,000, so less than $1,000 an acre. Uh, let's bring this up on a map. As with all of our listing pages, we have GPS coordinates here. Click any one of them, and it will bring the property up here on Google Maps. So... We mentioned Albuquerque earlier. Uh, let's just pull back for those of you who are not familiar with the geography of the state, not familiar with Torrance County, and just give you a sense of where exactly this is. So up here in the north central part of the state, of course, you have Albuquerque, largest city in the state, most population dense city in the state, a lot of attractions, a lot of things to do out here in Albuquerque. It's a happen in town. Torrance County is a relatively large landmass of a county that occupies a, a pretty substantial region right over here just east of Albuquerque. The subject property itself is roughly about 30, 35 minutes from the city. And if we right click and measure distance, you can see that, yeah, about 35 minutes as the crow flies. Mind you, most of that is the I-40 corridor. So maybe you're doing 75, 80 miles an hour. Uh, maybe you're getting there a little bit faster. Additionally, there are some side roads here like the 337. If you want to do a kind of nice country drive up into the East Mountain region and then hop on the 40, you can do that as well. Whatever the case, it should be noted, guys, that uh, nearby grocery and supply runs, uh, if you do need anything, of course, Mori Moriarty, you've got up here, uh, just within the I-40 corridor, there are a number of, we'll call them amenities, a number of places you can go for, uh, you know, minor amount of groceries, minor amount of supplies, things like that. Pretty much every fast food restaurant has some kind of footprint up here in this region, banks, post offices, things like that. More realistically, however, over here in Edgewood, you've got the Super Walmart, you've got uh, Walgreens over here, you've got the Smith's uh, Food and Drug, uh, a bunch of grocery stores really in this region. This is the Walmart Supercenter, et cetera. So the point is that with this property, if your first question is, okay, well, how far do I have to drive to get groceries or supplies, or even how far am I going to have to drive to take the kids into school, so on and so forth, it is either going to be one of these two places, Edgewood or Moriarty. With that said, uh, let's pull back here and just kind of zoom in on the subject property and talk about this a little bit more. So the uh, pin on the map has already disappeared, which is not helpful at all. But we're going to go back to this view. And we're going to pause the video. Hang on, guys. The pin on the map is back, guys. It's very fickle, the Google Maps. Anyway, over here is the 41. Of course, the 41 takes you all the way up to the aforementioned I-40 up here. So from the highway, you're just taking the 41 down. You're banging a sharp right over here, and then you can head out to the subject property. Banging that sharp right on Marshall, by the way. The property sits at the corner of what Google Maps is identifying as Mark Drive and Arlene Drive. And if we zoom in far enough here, you can kind of get a sense of the plat overlay that exists out here. So as noted, this is roughly 19 acres. I'm going to round off for conversational purposes and call it a 20-acre lot. This is the 20-acre lot right here, and as you can see, most all the other lots that are around it are five-acre lots, uh, some rare exceptions out there. But most everything in that region has been subdivided into five acres. This is one of the larger parcels that exists, so if you do end up buying this and building out there, you will have more land than 
pretty much most all of your neighbors. Uh, I just want to point out to you guys, normally this is the point in the video where I like to direct your attention to the uh, photo gallery down here just to kind of show you guys a plat map. Torrance County, however, reported that the plat maps from the Antelope, Antelope Springs region have not been digitized, so they did not have a plat map for us. So the best we can do is just sort of reiterating the general size, shape, location of this property here on the sort of Google Earth overlay. Uh, but as you can see, that pretty well mimics what is already on Google Maps. So that's the location of the property, guys. It's a giant rectangle. There you go. And as you can see, it sits in very close proximity over here to these agricultural uh, areas. Uh, in addition, there are a bunch of kind of small family farms in this area. Now, normally I like to go to the photo gallery. I like to kind of walk you guys through some pictures. There are some things I want to make you aware of here with the property, and I think they're a little easier to demonstrate on Google Maps. So the first is I remarked earlier that the par property is mostly fenced. So let's talk about that. So number one, uh, this property owner, this one, this one, um, which is this guy over here who seems to have all of this land. Uh, if you zoom in on this, you can see that they have all erected fences separating their properties from the subject property along the eastern boundary and along the southern boundaries right here. So it's pretty well dictated what your property boundaries are. Additionally, of course, you've got the road frontage right here along the western and northern boundaries of the property. I point this out for two reasons. Number one, you're in an area where, of course, there's some livestock. So the benefit here is that they're not going to be wandering onto your property. That's good. You don't have to worry about actually building the fence yourself, uh, number one. And number two, which is that you're not going to have to spring for the cost of a survey. So this is immediately a benefit. This is immediately a savings to the buyer. Uh, and that you're not going to have to get somebody out there to tell you where exactly your property starts and ends. It's pretty obvious. Now, I will note that the one sort of break in the fence, the one place where fencing does not exist, is here along um, the back end of this guy's property. That being said, I think it should be pretty obvious, uh, particularly if you're trying to stake this thing out. It's pretty much a straight line from here to the road. So... Overall, I would say that it's, it's pretty well fenced like that. Uh, of course, if you are going to have livestock out here, then you're probably going to end up having to fence this part of the property, both the western and northern boundaries of the property. But if not, at least you won't have to worry about them intruding on your land. Number one. Number two, guys, let's talk about power. So this is one of these regions where, as you can see, if we pull back on the map here, there's a lot of people living out here. Obviously, there's power lines in this region, and less obviously, there's underground utilities, but they are there. Uh, whatever the case, if you zoom in on the map, what you'll see is that it's kind of every other road has power on it. And this is one of these kind of rare properties where there's no power at the lot line. There's no power running along the northern or western boundaries. But pretty much every adjacent parcel, one, two, three, this guy over here, these people up here, everybody has a power line, a power pole on their property, power servicing their uh, their homes home site. So I just want to kind of zoom in on these just to kind of show you this. Now, obviously, we've got photos of these in the gallery, but I want to reiterate this for a reason having to do with underground utilities. So if you look at some of the home sites here, you can see power poles, power lines, uh, so on and so forth. The nearest one to the property boundary here that I can discern seems to be if the property is ending here, there is one right here, uh, at least along the eastern end of the property. Additionally, of course, these are all pretty well-established, nice home sites down here. And if you look, running along Marshall, you have pretty much a utility easement here along Marshall. That's number one. Uh, well, there's more. I promise I've seen them. Anyway, number two, number three, so on and so forth. Uh, if we take the little guy here and we drop him on the map, you're going to see that it was a... <laughs> The photography is not incredibly accommodating here, so you can't really get a good sense of it, but you do get a sense, of course, that there is power running up and down this area. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you, so we've got a photo gallery full of photos, which I'll get to in just a second. Sometimes our photographer goes out to these properties, and he gets worried that he's going to get shot at. A couple years ago, he had a bad experience, and so he likes to leave the neighbors alone, and he hopes that they leave him alone. And he also likes, when he goes out there, to not look like he's taking photos of their properties. Whatever the case, I ask him for photos of underground utilities, and he tries to provide those. He informed me this time, however, that every time he tried to take a photo of an underground utility box, there was somebody out there in their front yard eyeballing him. So bear with me on this one, guys. There is an underground utility box right here, which you can only barely see. So this is not at all helpful what I'm doing, but I'm going to try anyway. If you look here at this corner, there's one here. And if we drive the Google Maps card to here, you can kind of get a little bit of a better sense of it. Uh, from this angle, but not not terribly. No, I admit it's terrible. Uh, whatever the case, point is underground utilities right here at this corner, very close to the subject property. 
Uh, additionally, there are some up here on this property that I have noticed, and additionally on the properties that are over here on this road. Again, if we take the little guy and we drop him here on Google Maps, uh, specifically right by this power line, you can see underground utility box right there. The point, because I don't have as much photographic evidence of this as I would like this time, is that there are underground utilities in the region. Now, if you're saying, I can't make heads or tails of this goofy map or whatever the hell you're doing in this video, please go out there, take a look at the property, scout the property, be my guest, confirm what I am asserting here in this video. But uh, there are underground utilities in the region, there's power at pretty much every adjacent lot, and uh, my sense is that it is likely not difficult to get those lines extended to the subject property. Uh, I presume anybody who's going to spend $15,000 on a 20-acre piece of land is probably buying it to build on. And uh, my supposition here is that the degree of difficulty with getting those lines extended uh, should not be too bad. Additionally, should not be too expensive. Now, over to the photos, guys. As always, of course, we always recommend reach out to the local utility companies, talk to them. I'll get into that a little bit more in a bit. But Central New Mexico Electric Co-op is the uh, utility company that services this region. Uh, they, of course, kind of contact information. Their contact information is included down here. Click the link. It will take you to their website. Um, I should also note, guys, because a lot of you have been requesting this information, cell signal in the area was very good. Our photographer reports that it was very good. All right, so let's talk about the region. These are some of your neighbors. These are some of the nice homes that are out there. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a well-kept, well-maintained little area uh, for the most part, and I'll get into exceptions in just a bit. But the point is that you have some mobile modular homes out here. Um, there we go. All right. Let me pause the video for one sec, guys. Hang on. There we go. Now the photos are in focus. Uh, whatever the case, this is the road leading out to the property. This is Mark Drive right here. Poorly labeled, guys, but it says Mark Drive. If you scrutinize the photo, you can see that. Of course, you can also see that the county roads out here are very well maintained. This is something you're going to be able to navigate in any type of vehicle. Uh, you can get an even better sense of the roads in this photo and more in this photo. But these are pretty well maintained dirt gravel lots. Uh, dirt gravel roads, excuse me. Uh, more to the point, as you go through the photos, you get a sense that not only is this a nice, flat, buildable piece of land, but it's also... So these photos were taken in January uh, of this year, and uh, of course what you see from this is that it still looks pretty lush, even in January, even in freezing cold New Mexico January, or whatever passes for freezing cold in New Mexico, uh, even with a lot of the, you know, kind of grass dying out there at this time, this still looks pretty lush, so you can only imagine how green this would be in the summer months, uh, etc. Additionally, as we go through this, you can see some of the agricultural um, fields that are represented over here, some of the ag businesses in this area. Uh, etc. So most of these photos all kind of look the same. The lot is, uh, all 20 acres of it are, you know, largely interchangeable. Uh, so I'm not going to belabor the photos too much. I will encourage you guys to review these on your own time, and they'll give you an excellent sense of the property. I am, however, going to keep going until I get to the fencing, because I do want to show you guys what this fencing looks like out here. It's coming. Swear to God, guys. Hey, fencing. Fantastic. All right, so this is one of the boundaries of the property. I believe this is the southern boundary of the property uh, and the fencing that exists out there. And then, of course, as we go further here, there will be more fencing photos here of the eastern boundary. Uh, of course, if you review this on your own time, you will see even more of that. Anyway, guys, we're going to have a drone video down here at the bottom of the page, which will give you an even better sense of the property, the surroundings, so on and so forth. I do just want to take a moment to point out to you a couple things. Number one, as always, guys, we've got the drone photos here just to kind of represent what the property and what the area is like from this high angle. We, of course, also have the uh, overlays just to give you a sense of the size, shape, general footprint of the property. As you can see, this is a pretty big lot. Uh, over here, you've got one of your neighbors with their five acres. You get the other neighbor with their five acres, another one over here, so on and so forth. And the point is that this property runs the length of all of their uh, lots. So big property, that I guess is the point. Also within these uh, high angle photos, you can see the fencing that runs here along the southern end of the property. And of course, more photo overlays. Anyway, guys, with all that said, let's talk about zoning. Let's talk about Torrance County. So uh, this, and we have this written up here in the table draw your attention to this. Um, the subject property is zoned rural residential in a pre-platted land district. And that designation means that the subdivision was created before Torrance County had formal zoning laws and hence tends to benefit from a more relaxed attitude when it comes to both permissive and conditional uses. Now, guys, let's be clear. If you click this link, it will take you to the Torrance County zoning ordinance. There are counties in New Mexico that have basically very little zoning. 
There are counties that defer to subdivisions, that defer to covenants and restrictions. They defer to the towns and municipalities within them. Torrance County is not like that. Torrance County has a pretty dense 200-some page zoning ordinance for all of the land, and there's a lot of it within their county boundaries. Um, point being, I don't want to give you guys the impression that you can do whatever you want. There's no zoning. That is not the case. There's zoning out there. But uh, as you read the pre-platted lands district description here, okay, basically what it says is that because this area existed before formal zoning, they don't have a lot of ordinances for it. And they mention here permissive uses, all permissive uses allowed in the RR district, which is what this falls under, and conditional uses, uh, all conditional uses allowed in the RR district. So they're not incredibly specific. Now, I'm going to caution you guys. If you're looking at this property seriously, what you should know particularly if you have any sort of aspirations to use an RV on the property or to camp in any way uh, when you're not building out there. Generally speaking, in Torrance County, the rules that they have about that is that as long as you've got a building permit, like, mo like much of New Mexico, they anticipate you're going to need a secondary structure in which to live while the primary structure is being built. With a building permit, you can RV on the land, you can camp on the land. Now, I don't imagine most people are buying a $15,000 property solely for the sake of camping on it. I do, however, imagine that some people are going to buy this property with the idea that I'm going to store my RV on it, so on and so forth. I'm really going to encourage you guys, reach out to the county, talk to them about this. If you have specific questions beyond, hey, I want to build an SFR, I want to build a single family residence, always best to talk to planning and zoning. There's a guy who works in the Torrance County Planning and Zoning Office, and again, we have their contact information down here. His name is Steve. Steve, I think, has been there longer than the county has been a county, and he has a savant-like knowledge of that entire 200-plus page zoning ordinance. And if you reach out to Steve and you say, hey, Steve, I'm looking to buy some land in Antelope Springs. I want to do X, Y, and Z. What do I need to know? Now, again, guys, when we look at the neighboring home sites, we get a sense of what is allowed out there, what is easily permitted, what nobody cares that you do. Maybe they might ask you to skirt the foundation of the structure in a certain period of time, cement foundation, something like that. I don't know. Planning and zoning can guide you better. But if you have anything more elaborate or more unconventional than regular single-family residence or mobile modular home, probably want to reach out to them. You want to talk to them. At the very least, about permits, about what do things cost, so on and so forth. The point is, is that if you read this excerpt from the zoning ordinance, which is how this area is defined as this pre-platted lands district, rural residential pre-platted lands district, it gives you the impression here in these six pages, that they really don't have many restrictions on it. Um, again, this designation is a combination of two separate designations. It sort of has both from my understanding of it, uh, rural residential and pre planted lands. And rural residential gets a little more involved. They kind of expand a little bit more on things like how many, you know, numbers of, of pig, sheep, chickens, and goats and whatnot you can have on so many acres of land. Uh, you know, that's something you want to look into, of course, if you're going to own livestock, but I'm sure if you already own livestock, you don't need me to tell you that. Whatever the case, I want to drive home the point, talk to the county. We talk to the county and we get answers, but there's always the, this is not uncommon. You call, you call the county on a Monday, you get person A on the phone, they tell you one thing, you call back on Tuesday, person B tells you the exact opposite. So as I like to say here, if anyone is going to misinform our buyers, I would prefer it be the county. But what I get from this pre-platted lands district and what I've seen in previous properties we've listed and sold out there is that generally they have a pretty laid-back attitude about it. Now, let's talk about laid-back attitude for a second. So there are also covenants and restrictions that go with this area. Uh, this is Antelope Springs. So when this subdivision was first created, the developer came in and he created covenants and restrictions. Of course, if you click this link right here, it will take you to that documentation. It's a three-page document, and the restrictions, quote-unquote use restrictions, begin on page two. Now, if you read these restrictions, guys, you're going to find they're not very strict, number one. Number two, uh, for instance, let me give you for instance. The strictest we get in these is all new residential construction or erection shall be completed no later than 18 months after commencement. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable. Mobile homes set up, quote unquote, within six months, whatever exactly that means. Mobile homes shall be fully skirted of a character fashionable to the neighborhood within six months of placement. And then they have some notions here about livestock. But most of these in the two pages are fairly reasonable, no brainer, knucklehead, good neighbor, reasonable, quote unquote, restrictions. Our conversations with the county is that Antelope Springs, that these covenants and restrictions no longer apply. 
Now, I don't really believe that when I hear it, but that's what, I, that's what we've been told by the county. Assuming for two seconds that they're correct, great, you've got nothing to worry about. Assuming for two seconds they're wrong, you still don't have much to worry about because, again, these restrictions aren't that strict. Whatever the case, we have both this and the zoning ordinance linked here from this part of the property-specific notes, which will guide you better on that. So I encourage you guys, if you're going to spend $15,000 with us or with anybody, read these sorts of things, dig into this a little bit, make sure you understand what you can and cannot do on the land. These are the two most helpful documents. Now, quick thing, guys. If we pull up the map and we go back to the map and we look at what some of the neighbors are doing with their land, this person looks like they've got a fairly nice homestead right here. This person looks like they've got a fairly nice homestead. This one and this one and this one, sure. But then we pull back a little bit and we look over here and it looks like this one and this one have about, I don't know what, 7 million junk debris cars parked on their property. You will see this. This guy looks like he has that too. Okay. So point being, if there is real zoning law out here, if there is real zoning law being enforced out here or real covenants and restrictions, which specifically specifically say that you can't do this kind of thing on a piece of property. None of it's being enforced. So it's the kind of thing where I guess if you're looking at the land, you could say, oh my God, this is great because I'm going to have the freedom to do X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to have to worry too much about the county, you know, sticking its nose in my business. Or maybe you're the type of person who says, well, I want to live in a really nice neighborhood. I don't want my neighbors to have this kind of thing, etc." Point being, you should be aware of it. Now, of course, you could buy the 20 acres at a very reasonable price and then narc on all of your neighbors and keep calling planning and zoning until somebody comes out there and starts finding them or something. But point being, I don't think the county is too involved in what goes on out here. So just want to make you aware of that. Interest of full disclosure. This is what the area is like. This is how it's represented in the zoning. This is what our little conversations with county planning and zoning have led us to understand. One final thing, guys, which is getting water to the property. There's a lot of parts of uh, Torrance County, surprisingly, a lot of parts of Torrance County, specifically more up by uh, Moriarty, up by the highway, some subdivisions up here that have a water company that comes up. They hook up water lines. To my knowledge, that is not the case out here in this part of McIntosh, in this Antelope Springs region. In fact, if you eyeball these other properties, I think you, you can actually see wells that are... are um, housed on these properties. So the point is, if you are going to buy this piece of land, you should be aware that you're probably going to have to drill a well out there. That being said, when I see agricultural endeavors like this so close by, when I see this many people living in close proximity, it suggests to me that the water table is probably fairly accessible. Whatever the case, guys, as always, we recommend to our buyers, if that's something that you want to dig into, no pun intended, talk to local well drillers, ask them, people who know the region, who, who understand drill depth, who understand water tables, who understand the logistics and the cost involved in that, talk to those people and they can quote you uh, with far greater authority and expertise than we can. Whatever the case, the Office of the State Engineer out here in New Mexico is the governing body that permits wells and uh, permits water rights. So point being, this is going to be an entity that you'll have to deal with eventually. Maybe your well driller can help you with that. But it's always good to dig into this kind of thing beforehand. So if you click this link right here, it will take you to their website where you can do some further research on wells within the area, uh, water table within the area. What you know, It's not the kind of thing that we can ever give you an exact number on. Oh, it's definitely this, 200 feet down, 100 feet, whatever. But in doing your own due diligence, this is an excellent resource to use that can help sort of guide you in that direction. With all that said, guys, it should be noted that this property was closed on through New Mexico land and title, so we do have title insurance with it, which means we will be providing a warranty deed. So if this is something that you're interested in, I would encourage you guys, come up here, click the Buy Now button. It will take you to a secure checkout page right here where you can place the non-refundable, guys, let me say it again, non-refundable earnest money deposit. If you do not have all $15,000, do not embark on this transaction, okay? Please. Um, legal name for deed, a couple other pieces of information, tax address, where's Torrance County going to send the deed to, agree to the terms of service, and on the next page, you will enter credit or debit card information to put down that non-refundable $500. To explain, guys, properties that are in this price range, we always encourage our buyers close through a title company. As noted, we close through New Mexico land and title. That's a good choice, guys. The company that already researched the land and already insured the land is always a good first choice. Uh, whatever the case, we recommend this because, of course, it adds this third-party intermediary into the process who not only draws up the conveyance documents and handles the recording, but they also handle your money and they make sure it's not released to us until such a time as we have deeded the property into your name. So 
it adds a sort of additional benefit to the buyer aside from the fact that you'll also be getting title insurance. Of course, if you're going to build out here, if you foresee yourself taking any kind of loan from a bank, a lender is not going to lend on a property that does not have title insurance, so getting it is in your best interest. Whatever the case, if you come up here to our How It Works Buying From Us page, if I went through any of that too quickly, you can come down here to Type of Closing Recommended Title and Escrow, and you can read about the fairly simple three-step process. Step one, place the earnest money deposit. Step two, we draft a contract. We get it to you within 24 hours. You sign it, we sign it, and then we submit it to the title company, and they do the rest. Slowly, over about a month, but they do do the rest. I just said do-do. Guys, if you want to get a sense of what that contract looks like, by the way, just come here, click this link. It'll take you to this kind of generic version of one of our standard contracts. But basically, if you're saying, hey, I don't want to give these guys $500 until I know what I'm going to be asked to sign, this is what you will be asked to sign. We pride ourselves on our transparency here at Hemingway Land. Whatever the case, guys, I really like this property. I really like the price they were able to offer this at. And one of the things that I can't even believe I forgot to mention is that the Torrance County Assessor values the price of this lot at $45,000. Don't bury the headline. Uh, $45,000. We are offering, of course, for $15,000. Uh, you know, assessment values in Torrance County, they may be, they may be a little goosed, they may be a little liberal with their, with their assessment values. Uh, it is safe to assume. That being said, it is also safe to assume that at one-third of whatever they're guessing the market value of that property to be, uh, this is still a really good deal. So, I hope you guys agree. If you have any questions, as always, guys, leave a comment on the YouTube. Shoot us an email, support at HemingwayLand.com, or give us a call, 702-919-7170. As always, guys, thanks for watching. This video went on way too long. I appreciate your patience. Bye-bye.